Imagine looking up at the night sky and seeing, on the horizon, an orange star so striking that, for a few nights, it steals the show from almost everything around it. It's not a supernova, it's not a UFO, it's a real neighbor, a traveling star cutting across space toward the edges of our cosmic backyard. Its name is Gliese 710, and although it won't invade the orbits of our planets, its passage is set to prod a very sensitive region of the solar system, the Oort cloud, the huge reservoir of comets that surrounds the sun at absurd distances. When that reservoir is disturbed, ice boulders kilometers in diameter can turn into luminous visitors or into trouble. To understand why this matters, it's worth remembering how our home is organized. At the center, the sun, the star that dominates the gravitational game, keeps everything in line. Planets, moons, asteroids, dust, and gas. It's this invisible leash that prevents each body from wandering off on its own. For a long time, we believed this setup was enough to isolate us from outside disturbances. But space isn't a sealed bubble. From one geological age to another, nomadic stars cross the borders of our system, silent, invisible to the naked eye in most cases, yet capable of giving gravitational nudges that alter the paths of very distant objects. We have a recent historical example, in astronomical terms, Schultz's star. It's a faint, cool red dwarf paired with a brown dwarf in a binary system that today sits about 20 light years from Earth. Approximately 70,000 years ago, this pair passed by the outskirts of the solar system at something like 55,000 astronomical units from the Sun, around 8.2 trillion kilometers. That sounds like a lot, and it is. But on the scale of the Oort cloud, it was close enough to give cometary orbits a slight tremor. Some astronomers suspect that this little shove sent ancient ice on long trips toward the inner solar system. If our ancestors looked at the sky back then, they didn't see the intruder. Red dwarfs generally shine faintly. Even at its closest, Schultz's star would have been dozens of times too dim for unaided human vision. It came, rang the Oort cloud's doorbell, turned around, and moved on. Gliese 710, however, promises a far less discreet performance. Classified as an orange dwarf, it has roughly 60% of the sun's mass. In other words, it's larger and more luminous than Schultz's star, and it travels through the galaxy at about 50,000 kilometers per hour. That's not fast enough to escape the Milky Way, but it's enough that in approximately 1.2 million years, it will cross the outer reaches of our system. Today, this star is about 63 light years away, in the direction of the constellation Serpents. And as far as we can tell, it doesn't carry any confirmed planets around it. It is, therefore, a solitary traveler. Gliese 710's trajectory isn't a last-minute mystery. We've known it's moving toward us for decades. Estimates published at the end of 2016 pointed to an encounter with the outskirts of the solar system in that 1.2 million year window. The important detail, we're not talking about a dive into the core of our neighborhood. The visit should occur in the icy depths of the Oort cloud, tens of thousands of astronomical units from the sun. For the planets, that's far too distant to mess with orbits. For comets that live on the edge of a gravitational knife, it's close enough for a good shake. And what does it mean to shake the Oort cloud? Think of the Oort cloud as a vast spherical cocoon, crammed with icy, dusty objects that orbit the sun loosely. A gravitational shove, whether from a star's touch or a slow passage through a spiral arm of the galaxy, can slightly alter those bodies' paths. Some are flung outward into interstellar space. Others get pulled inward, beginning a journey of millions of years toward the inner solar system. When they arrive, they show up to us as long-period comets, immense tails, highly inclined orbits, Stories that began in abysmal cold and ended warmed by the sun's glow. This is where curiosity holds hands with caution. Large objects coming from very far away often cross the planetary plane at different angles and, in very rare cases, can collide with a planet. We know from Earth's history how much damage impacts can do. In 1908, for example, a colossal explosion shook the Tunguska region in Siberia. Trees were flattened across hundreds of square kilometers, windows shattered at great distances, and the energy released rivaled that of large modern bombs. There was no crater, it's believed the object exploded in the atmosphere, but the message was clear. You don't need a gigantic asteroid to cause real harm. So, when Gliese 710 passes by, should we expect an apocalypse of comets? Number. First, because statistics are on our side. Estimates suggest that, over the solar system's history, Tens of thousands of stars, on the order of 40,000, have crossed or will cross the neighborhood of the Oort cloud. The vast majority produce nothing more than a subtle rearrangement of icy orbits. 
Second, because even the comets that get kicked inward take a very long time to reach us. We're talking about millions of years from the initial disturbance to their passage through the inner regions. The encounter with Gliese 710 then starts a clock that runs in slow motion. Nothing changes on the scale of a human lifetime. And on the scale of civilizations, the challenge is different. Who will be here to watch the show? That doesn't mean the visit will go unnoticed in the sky. Gliese 710 should become an orange beacon visible to the naked eye, likely brighter than almost every star we know today. In favorable nights, it will be comparable to the brightness of the most intense stars and will catch the eye even of casual observers. Picture a stable orange point appearing at dusk and climbing higher over a few weeks. Future astronomy headlines guaranteed. The difference, of course, is that no telescope will be fast enough to watch the approach in real time. A star's dance takes ages, and what we'll see will be only a very small snippet of that choreography. There's another detail that soothes and intrigues at the same time. Impressive as a star with 60% of the sun's mass may be, gravity drops off quickly with distance. At its closest, Gliese 710 won't have the strength to tinker with the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, or Mars. Pluto won't be yanked from its place. Saturn won't lose its rings. Any mess, if it happens, stays at the edges, in the Oort cloud, where a mere breath can change destinies. It's like a truck passing far away on a dirt road. The houses downtown don't even shake. But the fence at the farm out on the outskirts feels the wind. You might be wondering, if encounters like this happen, why aren't we bombarded by comets all the time? Part of the answer lies in the absurd size of space. Even when something comes close, it's still very, very far away. Another part lies in the solar system's own architecture. Jupiter, the gas giant, has acted for billions of years as a gravitational goalkeeper. Its mass is so large that many incoming objects end up captured, deflected, or even flung away before they get near Earth. In some cases, sure, Jupiter can also redirect bodies inward, but on balance, it has protected us far more than it has threatened us. It's also important to remember that our planet's history includes impacts, some small, others capable of reshaping entire ecosystems. The difference is that today we better understand where these threats can come from and we have technology to systematically monitor the sky. Catalogs of near-Earth objects grow year by year, Telescopes sweep the firmament for points moving against the stellar background. Space missions test ways to deflect asteroids. In other words, if Gliese 710's visit seeds a larger crop of comets far in the future, our descendants still won't be blind. Curiously, thinking about Gliese 710 is thinking in deep time. We say 1.2 million years from now, with the same calm we use for next week. But between those dates lies all of Homo sapiens' history. Languages change, Countries are born and disappear, continents change their faces, and the sky? The sky seems the same, but it isn't. Stars move, constellations deform, and subtle tracks reveal the galaxy's great carousel. Gliese 710 is a beautiful, unsettling reminder of that slow choreography. We are passengers, and the stage we live on travels too. In the end, the storyline is this. The solar system is a well-organized place stable enough for life to flourish but not isolated from the rest of the cosmos. From time to time, a passing star brushes the outskirts and jiggles an old cabinet, scattering a few items on the floor. That's what happened with Schultz's star, which went almost unnoticed, though it left its name in the records. And that's what will happen, on a larger scale, with Gliese 710, the orange dwarf that will one day adorn our sky and rattle the Oort cloud. The good news is that no planets will be displaced, and the sun won't gain an intruding partner. The bad news, if we can call it that, is that a comet shower may increase a lot afterward, opening chapters of risk and wonder in the same package. And it's impossible to end without a final image. Picture Earth ages from now, perhaps with other cities, other languages, other questions. On some cold night, a child steps into the backyard and points to a very bright orange dot, asking an adult what it is. On the other side of that question lies our entire story. The fascination with the sky, the fear of the unknown, the urge to measure and predict. Someone will say, it's a passing star. And that answer, simple and true, carries a promise that we'll keep looking up, trying to understand what moves behind the darkness. When Gliese 710 crosses our horizon, we'll have the chance to witness, not the end of the world, but an eloquent reminder that the universe is alive, that nothing truly stands still, and that our system, as welcoming as it seems, belongs to a much larger neighborhood. The question that remains is, when the sky lights up orange, 
Who will be here to tell this story? And what kind of humanity will look up, curious like us, searching for meaning among the stars? If you enjoyed this, leave a like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.